Redditors who grew up poor, besides practical money-saving measures, what were the unwritten social expectations of your world growing up? You never brought the field trip permission slips home because you knew better than to make your mom feel guilty she couldn't pay the $5.20 fee to let you go. I did this, too. Staying behind in the library while everyone else went, honestly was perfectly fine with me. Hide money or it will be borrowed. Also, don't get attached to anything because if it's any good it'll be sold in a yard sale. And if it has any value it will be pawned. I got the same CD player for 3 Christmases and birthdays in a row out of pawn for birthday. Pawned again a month later. Out of pawn for Christmas. Pawned again by March. Etc. I drew all over my PlayStation after getting it out of pawn for the second time. My parents had pawned it the first time after asking me if they could. They promised me all sorts of stuff. Like new games and treats when they got it out. That didn't happen. The second time they pawned it. They did it while I was at school. They didn't even tell me. They just waited for me to go into my room and see that it was gone. So when I got it back that time. I grabbed a sharpie and drew gross pictures on it in swear words. Same with all my games. I mean. I only had FF7 and Tekken 3. But I didn't want to take any chances. I am the second of 8 kids of high school dropout parents. It doesn't matter if you don't like the food, clothes, shoes, toys etc. Take it. Say thank you and be appreciative. You can do anything you want. As long as it's free, you will survive. If someone needs it more, let it go. Never tell anyone you are hungry or need something. It makes you seem weak and needy. The second you become working age, 10 plus, you will help with bills. You have no choice. Your money is everyone's money, which is fine. Until you realize the new tattoo mom has and adds new TV. Keep your aspirations to yourself. Telling anyone in your household social strata about your plans to get out and do better may be met with bitterness and downright ridicule. People will call you a pity for wanting to go to school or stupid for having a career goal that isn't modest and local and vaguely dead end. People will tell you that you have no common sense simply because you refuse to see the world in terms of pure survival. It sucked to have to have a computer for school but not be able to afford it. Did your parents ever pull the whole they're not going to give you homework that you have to use a computer for? Going to the doctor isn't an option until your fever is sustained at 104. A bone is broken. Or the tooth rotted and won't fall out on its own. I am in my late 30s with full insurance and still have a hang up about going for medical care. Never tell your friends that you couldn't afford food or give them any clue about what it's like at home. My mother used to ask me if I told anyone how we live and that's when I started questioning our situation. I once told some friends we had mushrooms growing in our house. I thought it was cool. My mom was angry and told me to never tell anyone again. I realized as I got older why she was angry. The floor of our house was rotting with the mushrooms. But she couldn't afford to get it fixed. She was worried CPS would take me away for unsafe living conditions. I thought this was going to be a different type of mushrooms. I was talking to a friend and she stopped me and said, You don't tell people what goes on inside of this house, do you? No of course not. I lied. Because if I'd said yes, she'd manipulate my father into beating my A within an inch of my life. She pretty much got my father to beat me whenever she wanted it. What a B of a friend. I grew up in a trailer. In 4th grade, a girl was having a birthday party and needed addresses for invitations. The next day she told me her parents uninvited me because I lived in the trailer. That was a new thing I learned I was supposed to be embarrassed about. I guess just expecting to have to deal with other people's shtai parents sometimes. I feel this in my gut. I grew up feeling ashamed and a lot of times not understanding why. Adults were way meaner than kids ever were. I work with kids because I want to make sure that all of them know they are worth it no matter what is going on at home. I'm so sorry that happened. Money really can't buy class. I remember other kids parents not wanting me over because I was always hungry. I remember the same parents being upset when I started going to the gifted program with their kids too. BIMF 9. You're a goddamn doctor. I just want to cut down trees with your son and split a pop tart. The not being welcome because of hunger thing stuck with me. I was a kid who had never lived in a house with enough food. I thought the kids who drank apple juice were bougie af because we only had water. The experience of being yelled at by an adult for enjoying something their child shared with me shamed me to my core. 
Anytime my kids have friends over, I go out of my way to treat them to a good meal or some choice snacks. No one goes without in my home. Not eating lunch because it you either just ate breakfast or dinner's only a few hours away you'll be fine. I still have trouble remembering to eat lunch. Same. My husband always stays on me to be sure I've eaten because I'll go without either because I forgot to eat or else because I will go without to make sure everyone else got enough food, even seconds, before I'll eat. Also, growing up, people or family were always fed in a certain order at meals, elderly, men, women over 40-ish, young kids, the rest of the women and any other kids teens. Nothing wasted. Mum had a dish called mixed up stew which was basically a little minced beef, mashed potatoes and any leftovers from the fridge. Good menu planning she never called it that but one meal led to the next with last night leftovers included. Failing that, she always had a soup on the go using bones from chicken, dried barley and, yet again, leftovers, thing as they were all delicious, but that could be me just remembering her fondly. To this day I am still confused by people who seem to hate leftovers. It comes up a lot when there's a discussion on whether it's cheaper to cook vs eat out. People who find it expensive to cook want to something fresh and brand new every day, whereas I'll make a lasagne, about 6 portions, freeze it and have it whenever during the week month. It confuses me even more when that person is British considering how popular pre-made frozen food is here, and how many people find themselves at Frankie and Benny's, probably our version of Olive Garden, or TGI Fridays. I understand that cooking takes time and effort which is why it doesn't make sense to me to throw away leftovers or not make a little bit extra. My partner and their family hate leftovers. I think it has something to do with how they've generally always had money growing up. I wouldn't call them rich but they were comfortable. I was so surprised my first Thanksgiving at their house when they organized the meal to have bare minimum leftovers. To me that's the whole point of Thanksgiving. You have leftovers for days so you don't have to cook and get to enjoy at minimum two meals of Thanksgiving food. We weren't allowed to do any kind of extracurricular activities. So, no instruments, no joining any kind of sports or Girl Scouts or anything that required an upfront investment for uniforms or the season. Walmart shoes. My dad once said I wasn't really in need of glasses. That I just wanted to look like all my four-eyed friends. Lol. Spoiler alert, totally needed them, off brand everything, this makes me sad for the extracurriculars, it's insane how much money you need for sports and instruments, even buying used, they are so good for kids and should be available to everyone, where I went to school, a lot of the extracurriculars had grants where the rest of the parents would pitch in to pay the fees of the families that truly couldn't afford it, it was an economically diverse school with a pretty even distribution of families from food stamps to millionaires. AC was only for company. I lived in S. Florida and didn't know I could use the air conditioner without having someone over until I moved out of my parents' home. In the same vein, I lived in a place with bitter winters. While the thermostat at school and other public spaces was turned up past 70 degrees Fahrenheit. My home was always around 60 degrees, sometimes dropping to the 50s. We'd offset the low temperature by sleeping with multiple blankets and wearing layers upon layers. Sometimes even wearing snow pants around the house into bed. Shh, even our company had to sweat their AS off with us. We placed a bowl of ice cubes behind a fan lol. Don't ask for anything because you won't get it. This one is a really hard one to get over, too. Like I don't ask for anything, ever. And it leaves the people who love me very confused lol. Yeah, same here. I didn't realize this wasn't normal until my girlfriend didn't get why I was so uneasy with a friend buying me lunch. A lot of pent up guilt there. Yeah, and as an adult, you're basically on your own. I remember being in awe of how much people relied on their parents in their 20s. I'd be in a bind and someone might say, why don't you ask your mom? Because I have more money than she does. This is a huge one. Really affects every life decision you make because you don't have backup. Yes my dad's motto was those who ask, don't get. It really confused me as a child and still to this day. Funny enough, even if you didn't ask, you still never got. We were very poor growing up. You never ate the last of anything without asking first. Portions were small and limited. When I was 11 I was invited over to a then friend's house. I was floored by their house and furnishings. Very opulent compared to mine. Lunch time came. Her mom had set the table for sandwiches. 
everything laid out, three different breads, all sorts of meats, condiments and fruit. At my house lunch was a sandwich with white day old bread with peanut butter and jelly. Sometimes we would have those Lando Frost thin sliced meats. We were only allowed two slices of the meat per sandwich. So, at this friend's house, I make my sandwich with one slice of ham because it was way thicker than the stuff at home. The mom kinda freaks out what kind of sandwich is that? You need to put more on it. That's not enough. I explain that's what we do at home. They were horrified. Ended up sending me home with a care package of food. My parents never let me go to her house again because they were embarrassed I told them we were poor. Yes, those thin slices of budded meats that had been chopped and formed and pressed and then sliced. Never could be sure what kind of meat it was. Since ham, beef, chicken and turkey all tasted the same. Three packs for one dollar. Leave the TV on when you leave the house. When someone calls. Your parents are in the shower and you're able to take a message. You are perpetually young. Going to the movie, only during matinee showings and you are 12 years old until you're 16. At a restaurant, you're also 9 forever. Going to fast food, with any adult, you only order off of the dollar menu. Generous borrowing and burning culture. Everything you own is available to be borrowed by other poor people. My family had an extensive movie collection. Especially when we could record movies from cable to VHS tapes. And our neighborhood friends were welcome to borrow what they needed. Games, movies, CDs. We swapped and borrowed a lot. Oftentimes, it was only long enough to burn a copy to have for oneself. My father was constantly driving these two things into my head since I was old enough to remember. 1. Hard work will set you free too. You will not get anyone pregnant. He never meant that hard work would make you rich. He meant that if you're willing to work hard, you can always work some sh job that puts food on the table, and you'll be so exhausted by day's end, you can rest. In my father's eyes food on the table and a good night's rest was all a person really needed. The pregnancy thing was totally about shame. He grew up in the deep south with a Baptist preacher father. My father was around 6-7 in the early 1950s when his oldest brother, 15, got a girl. 18. In the church Brigo, the resulting shame and shunning from the community that ensued drove my father's mother to suicide. I'm sure to some degree, he blames his current life on the pregnancy that he had nothing to do with. Just like my mom but the feminist version. Hard work and an education will set you free, and for the love of money do not get pregnant. Kids and a man will drag you down. No shame in sex, just economic hardship. She also attributed the circumstances of her life on the choices, her choices, that led to an accidental pregnancy, but she accepted responsibility. It was just harder to get on solid financial ground and we all knew it. In the UK do not answer the door, do not answer the phone. When the man is looking through the window, make sure you can't be seen. Do not tell anyone who knocks on the door where the parents work. This turned out to be doorstep lenders like Provident no idea how they are still around these days. In the UK too. And this was a nightmare for me when I was a kid. Parents used to work and kid me always cowered in fear whenever the man came around and knocked. I still remember the way his shadow moved against the curtains. I was convinced he would get in and drag me to court because my dad owed someone money. Adult me. Doesn't owe anyone a damn thing but I still get anxious when there's a knock on the door or when the phone rings and I don't recognize the number. USA. My parents worked and were usually home about an hour or so after my elementary school got out. We lived around the corner and down the way. Like, less than 1km. Probably half a mile or so. Anyway, I had a cell phone to call when I got home. I was prepped with do not answer the door for anyone. Not your grandpa. Not your uncle. Not our friends, your friends, mailman, no one, not the police or fire department unless the house is already on fire. I never opened the door for anyone, if I knew who they were, I would shout through the paned window overlooking the porch, but even then, that was rare, I usually just stayed out of sight. I also always keep my front door locked now too, and if I'm not expecting someone, I don't answer the door if I'm home alone. I also have a big dog with a big bark. I too have front door anxiety. I still tell my daughters that. Especially when I have to do my 10 hour late shift and leave them at midday to homeschool themselves because of lockdown and because there are some truly evil walking demons out there and they are dangerous. Cunning and determined. Don't talk to anyone about it. It's shameful. 
me and my sibling weren't allowed to enjoy free breakfast programs for kids living in poverty that our schools hosted because it embarrassed my family. Granted we grew up not just poor but abused so that played into it. It was normal for money we got for Christmas, birthdays, and, from ages 14 and up, jobs to go to our parents for food and rent. Things did get better when we started working but as the family was doomed to fail due to abuse when we inevitably left at 18 and our parents divorced it left us with nothing. Working 4 years living at home and none of us were able to save money or go to post secondary until years later. If we were upset about contributing we were deemed selfish and accused of not caring about family. If someone buys you food at a restaurant order as cheaply as possible even if they tell you order whatever you want. Used to get death glares from parents if I ordered something 10 bucks or over at a place where average prices was 10 bucks. If you can get a burger and fries for 8 you better be eating a burger. I grew up solidly middle class, but I always do this if someone else pay for the meal. I just hate it when people spend too much money on me it makes me feel guilty. Difference between you choosing it and it being forced on you. When I was visiting my grandma for her 90th with my mom her bill took everyone to a really nice place and I nearly melted down cause everything was well over 10 and I was in a panic. It's funny now seeing my leftovers as a bonus snack and not part of the next day's meal. Had some weird lunches packed for me. Like cream cheese and olives in a burrito wrap. I was the scholarship grant kid at a wealthy private school. So I was never allowed to invite people home because we didn't have mansion like everyone else did. Legit. When I went to sleepovers, they were in mansions. Homes I still haven't seen the likes of in my adult life among peers. Just old money type homes. I could make play dates for them all or the movies or we could meet at the amusement park my mom got free tickets too. But don't invite them home. And if you're getting dropped off, any excuse for them no to come inside. At least they can imagine it's bigger or more opulent inside. Lol. I will never forget dating a guy in high school whose father owned a huge construction company. They lived in a gated community with all the elite in my small town. I lived in a trailer park out in the country. He used to get mad at me for not wanting him to come over for dinner or drop me off after a date. I couldn't stand him seeing our washing machine on the front porch because it leaked. I'm still poor. Do what you need to do before doing what you want to do. And then my mom would order takeout. Go to the movies. Buy junk and then cry 3 days later because we don't have enough to pay a bill or bills like rent, water or electric. I never had proper pants because my legs are so long and after 2 washes I was wearing high waters. She still does this too. Complains to me and my kids when we buy something with whatever little money, like toys or hair dye. Yet she spent the money the insurance company gave her to replace the roof of the house with to go to a supernatural convention. So we get rained on in our house with as many leaks as there is. Yet it is everybody else who needs to save to fix the roof, not her. People actually order takeout food like every night. I still think that's mad. Literally once or twice a year for us growing up. This. My family would only get takeout or go out to eat maybe twice a year. It was always a special occasion. My dad would make pizza from scratch. And my friends always thought that was weird. But making a pizza from scratch would cost maybe $5. But getting one delivered would cost 20 If your neighbors were in need you help them. Like. Mary's car broke down again. So my brother would go work on her car for free on his day off. And I'd get up extra early all week to drop Mary off at work and get her kids to school. Swing by in my lunch break to grab the kids after school. Too. Basically. When folks are in need you help them. And the same is done in return. The oldest kids babysit the youngest kids. My husband's family wasn't rich. But they were comfortable. They went out to eat and always ordered appetizers and dessert. Meanwhile we were lucky to go out to eat at all. To this day. I still hate ordering appetizers at a restaurant. It just goes against the grain for me. Growing up, I had lots of home cooked meals. It wasn't until high school on a date that I realized that I didn't know how to pay a bill at a restaurant because I'd never been. Don't do anything bad or illegal. But if you do, don't get caught. Bail is expensive. Lawyers and court fees are expensive. And synonymously never call 911 the police and only go to the doctor when it's needed never see a doctor or go to the emergency room unless you are actually dying and if you touch the thermostat you will be dying nobody touches the thermostat except dad on point of death 
Haha. <laughs> Allowance? That's for rich kids with trust funds. You need to complete all your assigned chores first and then if there's any extra work you can think of you can earn some pocket money. Friends are over? Boy do we have some chores for you. Friends are for stacking wood, not for playing. Your sister goes with you to your friend's house. Always. No whining. Always return anything you borrow in better condition. People will be eager to loan you things. Never do business with church members. It always ends badly. Don't loan money to friends. You'll lose both. Keep your hair brushed, your clothes clean, and be articulate and polite in all circumstances. We were not going to be trash just because we were poor. Also, no wearing ripped jeans. Even if it's the style, we're not spending money on new pants that look like old worn out pants. This made me so mad. I always blew holes out in my jeans because I was a rough kid and would fall and play hard. My mom would always find my jeans with holes and cut them into shorts without asking me. I always thought the jeans with holes looked cool. My mom was a seamstress and decided one day to cut all of the torn up hems off my pants and replace them with cool neon colors back when raggedy hems was the cool thing. I was so mad. This. My mom and dad got so good at this that people who didn't know us very well thought we were solid middle class. I can't remember how many times I got dropped off by our friend's parents only for them to ask why do you live here? UMM. It's because this is where our house is. All our clothes were clearance, thrift stores, and hand-me-downs. We were expected to be well-groomed, well-mannered, learned, and carry ourselves like we had money. My mom always called it middle-class values. Law. Thing is, it worked. My parents never got out of poverty but my sisters and I are all solidly middle class BC we worked for it. Never fill up the gas tank. You don't want to be in a situation where you have gas in your car but no groceries. Funny. It was opposite. Never let your tank go below 3 stroke 4. Your car is the most valuable thing you own. If sh happens you can always live in it or use it to get the f out of here. Overall. Independence at a young age but also responsibility. You cook, clean, and pitch in before you are asked. If you're waiting for an adult to make dinner, you're going hungry. Also, poor doesn't mean dirty. You keep what you have nice, clean, and well cared for. Seriously, I wouldn't trade my upbringing for anything in the world. Never ever ever ask for anything at someone else's house. Even family, you may accept if asked, but otherwise it's a weapon. This has made it extremely hard as an adult to interact in a world where you're pretty much expected to say something if you want something. Also made me extremely judgmental, and let's face it, a little jealous, of folks who never have any issues asking for what they want. Spoiled brats, the lot of them.